So we'll get right to calls. We've got Magic in Burnsville, North Carolina. I wonder why um, you don't believe in God. You're wondering why we don't believe in God. Yeah. Uh, my initial question, probably to respond to yours, would be, how could I? My first question is, okay, which God? You know, what, what exactly you're meaning? I don't want to make too many assumptions, no, but, well, but the answer is going to be the same. Well, but I'm not making an assumption that he's talking about why don't I believe in the, in the Christian concept of God? Why don't I believe in any supernatural entity that oversees reality? Okay, once, did you, once we determine that that exists, then we can refine down further attributes. But the initial assumption has to be justified first. You, you know, belief is something that needs to be justified by evidence. You know, you have to not only just, I, you know, define what it is that you're claiming uh, and, and make the claim clear, but you have to support that claim with sufficient evidence. And so Aaron's point of how could I gets, cuts right to the chase on that. You know, what is the reason um, that we should? Is atheism against Christianity or just against all religions? Okay, it's not against any religion, actually. There are actually atheist religions. Buddhism is often one good example of that. Uh, Taoism, pantheism of various forms, uh, shaman beliefs, they're all religions that also happen to be atheist. Atheist does not mean that you reject the possibility of a god. I have to, I have to, uh, to assist a number of people in this quite often. They, uh, they often think that... Um, well, people will sometimes brand themselves as agnostics because they are unsure whether a God exists or not. That's all of us. An agnostic, to my understanding, is someone who actually does believe that there's a God, but believes that the nature of that God is beyond human comprehension. Uh, an atheist is somebody who has said that if there is a God, then our knowledge of it would be beyond human comprehension, but we don't actually believe there is one. The only thing that defines an atheist is the, that you are not convinced that there must be a God. If you're not convinced of this, if your worldview does not happen to include a god, and you have to define what that is, then you are atheist. Now, what he was saying before about anti-theists, uh, maybe another realm. I mean, when you when you talk about how religions promote their specific agenda and their particular god and what he hates and who he hates and what he wants you to do to the people that he hates, that's where you get into into his motivation for anti-theism. I think I'm speaking for you, and I probably shouldn't. But uh, did that, that clarify? It, it, we're not against religion necessarily, although being a rationalist, which is a subset of atheists, because there's many different types, as I just illustrated, um, as a rationalist, an empirical rationalist like myself, I consider it dishonest to assert as fact what is not supported. And religions, of course, do that. They insist that you make positive assertions that aren't based on anything, that you state as fact, what are mere speculations? We don't. Why is religion the cause of most of the problems in the world today? Like September 11 and so on? Can you blame religion for that? Mm -hmm. But did you hear that question? You're asking religions cause problems and you refer to September 11th as an example? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always been that way. I mean, we, you have something where you need the people to believe in order to establish power, in order to, in order to hold position in religion, in order to have sway over other people. You have to have them believe what it is that you're selling. And uh, that's why you require faith. Now, to me, the only thing in the universe that really requires faith is a bad salesman because it requires that you absolutely swallow whatever I'm telling you. You have to believe it completely. I have to condition you that you realize that doubt is 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 uh, is is somehow evil that gullibility is praised and that if you ever second guess anything that I'm trying to tell you that's somehow bad you have to be conditioned to think like that and then when you're afraid of your own thoughts wherever they may vary from what I'm telling you is permitted to believe then I've succeeded in establishing a religion and religions work on humans emotions and they work on fear uh, prejudice and paranoia are the cornerstones of many religious beliefs. To, to steal something that Dennis pointed out yesterday on, on nonprofit, it's not that atheism is selling another form of religion. 
uh, we're not buying what the religions are selling. If anything, rational, scientific, skeptical, secular atheists are like the consumer watchdogs that are pointing out, hey, the stuff that they're trying to sell you, probably not true. When you, when you, let's look at the evidence on this. Are their claims actually supported? And for my money, uh, the answer has been so far, no, for almost every single one. Anything, anything that was uh, of significance to the religion itself, religions can claim any number of true things. I mean, it's like when people point to, to the Bible and say, well, look, those, those places in the Bible existed. Well, yeah, New York existed, but that doesn't mean Spider-Man's real. Okay, so what do atheists follow as morals? Or what, what guidelines do they follow as to live? Like... Christians who believe, um, shouldn't tell a lie, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. What do atheists believe? How? How, how do you, you go about, how do, how do atheists go about forming a moral code without, you know, some dogmatic ancient book to tell us you're, what to do? And it, well, it's worse than that. You're telling me that the only reason that people are, that should be nice to each other is because they're afraid of some inescapable sky daddy with an inevitable punishment. Is that what you're saying? That if we don't, if we don't fear this this indomitable beast coming after us, that we have no reason to be nice to each other. But the thing is, I think people get too hung up on this question of morals, and it's it's much much simpler than anybody would suspect. Um, the fact that we're all similar creatures in uh, with with similar goals similar values in the simplistic sense of life is generally preferable to death and health is generally preferable to sickness, that type of thing. It, it's not difficult at all I can give in you a, a cooperative society to come up with well, which, I, which actions are beneficial to myself and the group and which are harmful. I mean, it's obvious. I, it doesn't even take a great deal of thought for most of them. What I typically see uh, occurring in people that were once devout believers is when they come to the, the point where they realize that uh, at some point they had been lied to by people who knew in fact that they were lying and they begin to re-examine their religious beliefs and they begin to decide that uh, that they're all bogus. Um, it's not what a, a believer would generally suspect. It's not that they, they want to rebel. It certainly isn't that they hate God because, I mean, how can you hate something that you don't believe exists? But in each of these people, in every case of anyone that I've actually spoken to, in every case that I know of directly, when someone comes to the reality of viewing the world without a deity behind it, where natural things happen for natural reasons and things make sense, then their appreciation for science and nature and understanding and even truth is enhanced. I cannot think of one person who has eventually rejected or denied or shrugged off uh, religious beliefs who does not feel at, uh, at great benefit from that. And they all think that, you know, look at how much of my life I've wasted wandering around in the dark. But on the, on the question of morals, I definitely, if I were you, I, I'd stop by perhaps the Iron Chariots Wiki or even Wikipedia um, or do a search for the Euthyphro Dilemma. Um, which will kind of address what you were talking about before. It, in, in simplest terms, it, it asks the question, is something moral because a God commands it, or does a God command it because it's moral? And the idea that you need an externally enforced, externally dictated moral code to tell you what's right and wrong um, is one that I find not only absurd, but offensive. Okay, I have a more, like, more personal question to ask. Okay. okay. I'm a 17-year-old college student, and I don't really know what to believe in. That's a good position to stay on. Yeah. I, I'd say it's a good starting point, for sure. Uh, you, you know, you're better off than, than, than if you believed something that you had no good reason to. Uh, go out, explore, think about it, investigate different things. Um, I'm, I'm convinced, uh, as are most of the people that I associate with and you'll find on the show, that there is a tool set that allows us to figure out which claims are true and which claims are not true. Now, one of the things is if you're, if you're concerned about whether or not your belief in anything in the Bible is true, read it. I encourage you, read the entire thing. And if that alone doesn't do it for you, then start looking at other religious documents. 
ser seriously and sincerely read the Quran, read the Bhagavad Gita, read the Avestas of Zarathustra, compare various religions, and then maybe your, uh, your uh, horizons will expand a bit. It did for me. The content of this video is produced by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. If you enjoyed this content and are willing and able to provide a donation, please visit the website below.